Kalina resided with her spouse for a decade and a half. Everything was satisfactory. Certainly, they had conflicts, but they reconciled and continued living together. Everyone believed they had a wonderful and sturdy family. On one occasion, her husband wandered astray. Galena accidentally discovered this information. While waiting in line at the store's checkout, she overheard two women conversing behind her. One of them remarked, Why would he do that? His wife is beautiful, intelligent. He should only have eyes for her, but he's going after Verka, the waitress. The other woman incredulously replied, Really? How do you know? To which the first woman sighed and said, I live in the same building as Verka. Almost every night I see him leaving her. The second woman cautioned her to be quiet as he might overhear. Thelina didn't listen any further. Shame engulfed her, causing her to flush with fever. The prying eyes of strangers felt like burning on her back. She abandoned her groceries on the conveyor belt and rushed out of the store. At her place of residence, she wandered around the flat, incapable of remaining seated. Her daughter was completing her assignments in her chamber. Delina instinctively sensed, as all females do, that her spouse had altered. She did not wish to believe, dismissed suspicions and negative thoughts. However, no matter how much the situation is twisted, there will be an end. It turns out that everyone is aware, chattering about them. Her daughter had long since gone to sleep, and Galena perched in the kitchen, without illuminating the light, and awaited her spouse. At half past midnight, the key turned in the lock. It appeared to her that she heard not the ticking of the hands of the clock on the wall, but the thumps of her heart, which was about to leap out of her chest. As her spouse stealthily moved past the kitchen into the room, she turned on the wall lamp above the table. The click of the switch sounded like a gunshot in the night. Her spouse froze in surprise, his gaze puzzled. Are you awake? He asked hoarsely. I'm anticipating your arrival. I'm aware of everything. Please have a seat and narrate to me. Galena indicated the chair opposite. Her spouse obediently settled down, clasped his hands, causing his knuckles to whiten. His complexion grew pale and his forehead became covered with perspiration. You're being unfaithful to me. I even know with whom, Galena stated calmly. She still held on to hope that it wasn't true. However, her husband admitted to everything. No, he didn't depart, and she didn't expel him. Probably out of the fear of being alone. She decided to attempt living with it, but she couldn't. It worsened every day. Galena took her daughter and relocated to another town to reside with her parents. Galena was attractive, men pursued her, but she feared new relationships, didn't trust anyone. One thing was being with her familiar husband, with whom she shared many experiences, and another was being with a stranger, with his own personality, previous relationship baggage, children. Her daughter matured, she initiated her own youthful and tumultuous existence. And Galena stayed alone. One day, a former school comrade visited her and invited her to a birthday celebration. I have nothing to put on, Galena stubbornly insisted. Let me instead come to you in the evening. We'll sit, chat, drink a bottle of wine. No home parties. It's my jubilee. I've already made reservations at the restaurant. Only my closest pals will be there. Marinka's coming. Remember her? You should have seen how she's gained weight. Three kids, can you imagine? Remember Zenka Sidorkin, third time married. That's not counting the women he cohabitated with unofficially. Don't you wish to perceive anyone? Observe, I'll be offended. I'll forget the route to you. Not for a jest, angry Leod Milla. We'll purchase you a gown. This weekend we'll head to the mall. Too bad mine won't fit you. And get your hair done. You appear good with your hair up high. I'll give you earrings to compliment your gown and we'll get your eyes. Well, Luda embraced Galena and she yielded. On the weekend, they went shopping and picked her a stunning black gown. It was matched by a string of beads and the same earrings. Galena had long since adapted to do her own hair. She pinned her wavy hair nicely at the back of her head. A few strands came out and curled at the temples. Ludmila skillfully painted her face. When Galena gazed in the mirror, 
she did not recognize herself. You what? I don't look like myself, so I'm not going anywhere. Kalina went to the bathroom. Just in time came the daughter, saw the transformed mom and aghast. You can't be more than 30. How it suits you. Excessively luminous, griped Galena. No, it's just appropriate. Why haven't you ever worn cosmetics like that? So that now every day so proceed to work, uttered the judgment of her daughter and did not let her cleats off the makeup. At the anniversary, Galena heard so many commendations to her address, as for all her life has not heard. One man at a neighboring table threw adoring glances at her. Galena averted her eyes in embarrassment. When the dancing commenced, she remained seated at the table. She was dizzy from consuming wine. May I invite you? She heard, turned her head, and saw the man who had been looking at her. He leaned slightly over her, waiting for an answer. Galena stood up and immediately sank back into her chair. Dizzy? He asked understandingly. My legs are swollen. My shoes are too tight, Galena moaned ingenuously. That's because you've been sitting for so long. Come on, we'll slow dance. You'll see, it'll be easier. He took her hand. He guided her in the ballroom, serenely and tenderly. His breath tussled the ringlet at her temple. How much time had passed since she had waltzed? Through the fabric of her gown, she sensed the warmth of his hands. The pleasant aroma of masculine cologne caressed her nostrils. I'm tepid, initially dancing in fragrance. Then another person's perfume will have the scent. A sobering idea crossed her mind. The music ceased, and they embraced each other in the center of the hall briefly. Galena was the first to disengage, taking a step back. The man released his grip on her waist, and suddenly it felt cold and desolate. He escorted her to a table and departed. Right then, Ludmila sat down next to Galena. You see, you didn't want to go. Do you know who it is? That's Sokolov. A widower, by the way. You saw the eyes he looked at you with. Don't invent stories. Why would a man like that desire me? He needs a young model, not a mature divorced woman. Avoid fabricating it. What if you're 40? Indeed, you provide a head start to any model, fervently urged the devoted friend. This is the present day and wash my face so he won't recognize me. Lud, I'll go. I've rubbed my feet with my shoes. They're swollen. Let's request someone to drive you. No, I'll take a cab. Galena stood up from the table and, despite Ludmilla's platings, departed from the room. And at the exit of the restaurant, she encountered Sokolov. Are you leaving already? I'll accompany you out, he said in a tone that did not allow objections. And she didn't want to disagree. Her shoes were hurting. Her head was spinning. She had no strength to walk to the bus stop and wait for the shuttle bus. So when Sokolov guided her to his car, Kalina sat down on the passenger seat without further ado. You can remove your shoes, he said, having guessed what she was yearning for. Kalina kept quiet and didn't take off her shoes. It would be impossible to put them on later. How are you acquainted with Ludmilla? inquired the person as they departed from the eatery. Ludmila frequents this place, arranges business gatherings. This establishment belongs to me. And what is your occupation? Galina glanced at Sokolov. Now turn into the residential compound, second entrance. Stop here, she requested and unlocked the vehicle door. Thank you very much. Galina stepped out and hurriedly walked to the entrance without looking back trying not to show any signs of a limp. As the door closed behind her, she let out a breath. Why did I rush as if someone pursued me? She chuckled, removed her shoes, and began ascending to her floor. Upon reaching home, she took off her lovely dress and jewelry, removed the hair clip from her hair, and shook her head. She cast one final glance at her reflection in the mirror and entered the shower. Brushing her wet hair before the mirror, she muttered aloud disappointedly. There we go. The princess has transformed back into Cinderella and sighed. The following day, Ludmila phoned. Incidentally, I phoned Sokolov and requested your contact number, uttered a companion over the phone. And you provided it? Galina was alarmed. 
No, that's why I'm making the call. That's fine. He fancied me yesterday and today. He'll see me without battle coloring and will be disheartened. I don't need to endure and worry. I'm done. Inform him about that. Look, he's a regular guy. Are you going to live alone till you're old? I'd hang your husband, because of whom you have such a low self-esteem, by one place. I simply don't want anything. And Galena passed out. Each time she spotted a car on the street that resembled Sokolov's, Galena flinched and was frightened. But whether Sokolov was too preoccupied or whether Lyudmila had conveyed her wish to him, he never came. And Galena calmed down. Days passed by day after day. Only she kept reminiscing about the scent of his cologne and the warmth of his hands on her back. One day a man sat next to her on the bus. Galena caught a familiar fragrance. Pardon me, which type of restroom fragrance do you utilize? She inquired of him. I'm not sure. It's a fancy label. My spouse presented it to me. Why? Does it have an unpleasant odor? No, quite the opposite. I intended to give it to my spouse. Galena was ashamed, got up, and proceeded towards the exit. Her daughter's birthday was nearing. Galena went grocery shopping on her day off. She took so many things that the bags were pulling away from her hands, causing pain to her palms. Throughout the journey, she scolded herself for her greed. She should have bought twice the amount or brought her daughter along with her. She arrived at a tree, placed the bags on the ground, and straightened up, rubbing her reddened palms. Suddenly, one bag collapsed, the apples spilled out, and rolled down the sloping sidewalk towards the roadway. Galena hurried to gather them, yet she couldn't catch up. Observing the car wheels crushing the apples, she witnessed a sudden stop by the sidewalk. A man alighted from the vehicle and began collecting the remaining apples. As he approached, she recognized Sokolov. Here, take these. The bag is torn, he inquired. Though he didn't recognize her, Galena lowered her head, concealing her face just in case. Uncertain how to take the apples from him to avoid them rolling under the car wheels once more, she hesitated. Let me handle it. Sokolov went to the tree and placed the apples in a bag. Are all these bags yours? Allow me to give you a lift back home. The bags seem heavy, and the handles might break. Before she could object, Sokolov effortlessly grabbed the bags and transported them to the car. Galena had no choice but to sit on the rear seat to hold them. Are you preparing for the celebration? He captured her glance in the rearview mirror, and Galena instantly lowered her head. It's my daughter's birthday. Turn into the yard here. When she exited the vehicle, Sokolov offered to carry the luggage to the apartment. No need, I'll do it myself. Galena said sharply, turning away. Such a radiant and lovely woman resides in this entrance, Galena. Do you know in which apartment? Sokolov observed Galena attentively. We have several of them, from 30 to 80 years old. Which one do you desire? She asked teasingly, took the luggage and went to the entrance. At home, she placed the bags on the floor and examined herself in the mirror. One immediately fell on its side and the apples rolled across the floor. What a sight! What kind of day is this? Galena was upset and began picking up the apples. Ever since that moment, she initiated the process of shading her eyebrows and eyelashes. Similar to all light-haired individuals, they were also of a lighter shade. Her daughter observed and praised her. It's the appropriate time. And for whom are you making an effort? For myself, stated Galena, and pondered that she started encountering this Sokolov too frequently. It would have been preferable if he encountered her two decades ago. On Saturday, she and her daughter prepared a celebratory table. The meat was cooking in the oven. The morsel was cooling on the balcony when the first guest rang the doorbell. Galena glanced at her watch. And who is so eager? It's still an hour before the designated time. She said aloud and went to open the door. Sokolov was standing on the threshold with a bouquet of roses. You? Galena gasped. Hello. I promptly realized that you were the one with the apples. You were very cautious in concealing your face from me. I confess, I didn't recognize you. You're mistaken. I'm not that Galena. 
She began blushing. That is the particular one. I don't require an alternative. I admit, I phoned Ludmilla and she verified it. So you appear even more attractive. May I enter? Mom, who is present? Hollered from the room daughter. It's for me, Galena replied. It's my daughter's special day. She's anticipating some companions. Once the young individuals had gathered, Sokolov took Galena out of the residence. Let's not disturb them. They strolled around the town, then savored coffee in his cafe. Occasionally, he invited her to the movies or the playhouse. He didn't hurry her, didn't request her to visit him, and didn't bring her to his place. For this, Galena was appreciative of him. They celebrated New Year's Eve collectively, but she did not stay overnight. What a simpleton you are, uttered once Lid Milla. Such a man is pursuing, and she turns her nose up. I can't do that promptly. It's challenging to start believing again after betrayal. Just relax. It may be a brief joy, but it'll occur. If you misplace a man, you'll regret it. Spring arrived. Gentle leaves emerged on the trees. The natural world was stirring and blooming. During the May holidays, Sokolov extended an invitation to his dacha to Galena. I desire to vend it. I don't have enough time for it. Female hands are insufficient for the tasks there. Let's go and verify if everything is in order, said Sokolov. Delina consented. As they approached the house, resembling a magical tarim, she marveled at it. Are you not reluctant to sell such a beauty? Galena was surprised. I won't sell it if you agree to be the mistress here. We haven't cultivated anything here. My wife cultivated flowers and greens for the table. We used to visit for vacations, barbecue, and invite friends. But I don't need it all alone. Galena looked at Sokolov's attractive profile. Her daughter has her own life. Perhaps she'll marry soon. And he waited patiently for her, didn't rush her. He never let her doubt him, just as Ludmila had said. Happiness might be brief, but it will be present. Maybe everything will work out, and Galena agreed. Affection varies at each stage of life. If during youthful years it is fervent and intense, and appears will endure eternally, then as one grows older, it transforms into serenity and equanimity. Every single one of its instances is encountered as the ultimate occurrence. During the night, Galena positioned her head on Sokolov's shoulder and experienced tranquility and bliss. Maybe such occurrences are referred to as felicity.